press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Back to the biology uh, class, first PUC biology. So I am Anuradha from Siddhaganga PU College. Yes, this is my second video on animal kingdom. So we had started our studies on animal kingdom. So in animal kingdom we studied how the animal kingdom has been broadly classified into 12 phyla on certain characteristics. So we were studying basis of classification of animal kingdom. So we had studied some of the characteristics in detail like body organization or cellular, cellular organization in the body where we studied unicellular and multicellular like so or acellular and multicellular which also comprises of tissue level of organization, organ level of organization organ system level of organization we had studied and after that based on the digestive system the animal kingdom has been classified so in the in animals have been classified into complete digestive system and incomplete digestive system in incomplete digestive system we have a single opening in the body it serves both for ingestion and also for digestion of the food so Example, we had given cylindrates and platyhel menthes. In, <coughs> it is also called as blind sac body plan. It is also called as blind sac body plan. So we are going for a very quick revision of what we had studied in the last class, right? And in the second, second we had studied complete digestion wherein the digestive system comprises of two openings in the body one is for ingestion of the food that is mouth and the other is for ingestion of the undigested waste that is anus so that sort of body plan is also called as tube within tube plan it is called as so based on cellular organization animal kingdom is classified and based on digestive system the animal kingdom is classified based on circulatory system so circulatory system has been classified into two types open type and closed type in open type the blood flows the blood that is pumped by the heart will flow in the spaces between the tissues which is called as open type of circulatory system and which is seen in orthopodins molluscans and echinoderms closed circulatory system wherein the heart pumps the blood and blood flows in the blood vessels or in the blood capillaries so that sort of classification is also animals can also be classified based on the open and closed type of circulatory system and third we studied about the symmetry of the body radial symmetry organisms can be classified into three types based on the symmetry asymmetry radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry so organisms belonging to radial symmetry they are called as radiata organisms belong to bilateral symmetry with which exhibit bilateral symmetry or, or grouped under bilateria and there are also organisms which are irregular in shape and do not show any side, sort of symmetry and they are called as asymmetrical they come under the group called as asymmetrical so for example for asymmetrical animals or sponges or poriferans they are also called as and for radial symmetry Coelentrata and Tenophora, all the examples belonging to these two phylum, they come under radiata. Radiata, uh, radial symmetry means if you cut the organism in any plane passing through the central axis, it gives two identical halves. It gives two identical halves, then you call it as radial symmetry, and the group is called as radiata. Finally, bilateral symmetry, if you cut the organism in only one plane that is from top to bottom or in longitudinal, it gives two identical halves. So they come under bilateral symmetry. The symmetry is called as bilateral symmetry and they come under the group bilateria. <coughs> examples from platyhelminthus to chordates, all examples. All right? And another classification, basis of classification we were studying that is based on the germ layers. Animals can be classified based on their germ layers that is diploblastic and triploblastic. 
So I think the uh, figure is very clear today. Rather on that day I had written a very <coughs> rough diagram. So diploblastic and triploblastic. So the diploblastic showing two important layers of cells. So the outer ectoderm, this is the outer ectoderm and this is the inner endoderm. I think there is a clear uh, differentiation of the layers. So if you can't see the colors or if you can't uh, differentiate the layers, please comment and uh, tell me that that we are not unable to identify the layers of some kind of please put a comment so that will make uh, brighten the figures or we will use some uh, other uh, medias media to explain anyhow so this is endoderm this is inner endoderm this is outer ectoderm and in between there is a fluid gelatinous fluid filled uh, a layer which is called as mesoglia or it is also called as mesenchyme and this is animals have been classified into triploblastic and diploblastic. Diploblastic body wall contains two layers, triploblastic the body wall contains three layers, the outer ectoderm, the middle mesoderm and the inner endoderm. So that is based on the germ layers and based on the presence and absence of body cavity, organisms can be classified into three types. One is acylometer, the second is uh, pseudocylometer and the third is coelometer. So in acylometer, the body cavity is totally absent. You call it as acylom. A stands for absence. The body cavity is called as coelom. So the body cavity or the coelom is present in between the body wall and the alimentary canal and that cavity is referred as coelom. So pseudocylometer, a false coelom or a false body cavity is present wherein the cavity is formed in the form of pouches and in coelometer you can see a clear cut coelom which is lined by mesoderm. Mesodermal lining is seen here the mesodermal lining is absent and the uh, cavity is present in the form of pouches. Here there is no cavity at all. No cavity, a coelometer. A false cavity is present, pseudocylometer. True cavity is present, a true coelom is present, you call it you call it as coelom and the organisms with a true coelom is called as coelomates. Organisms with a false coelom is called as pseudocoelomates. Organisms with no body cavity are referred as acoelomates or referred as acoelomates. Yes. So until here we had studied, right? So basis of classification, we had complete up till the cavity. Still we are supposed to study the basis of classification. There are uh, still more points to be discussed. So one is, the next one is the notochord. So based on the notochord, presence and absence of the notochord, organisms have been classified. Next, it is also based on sedimentation. Organisms are classified based on the sedimentation. So we add up two more points. The other day we had left it. So habitat, you have included this. Two more we are going to discuss that is based on the <coughs> body temperature, based on the body temperature and based on the development, development, yes. So we are going to study still more characters. So organisms can also be classified presence on the notochord uh, based on the sedimentation, based on habitat, based on body temperature and based on development. And finally we will sum up with the help of a schematic representation. Okay. So I hope you are clear with diploblastic and triploblastic and acylometer, coelometer and pseudocylometer. So these are very important which may come in your exam, in the board exams, right? Okay, fine. I shall clean the board. Now we will go for the discussion of the further points which form the basis of classification. That is, we will start with the first one of today's that is notochord. Notochord. So this was ninth, I hope, eighth, seventh point, eighth point, ninth point. So we are adding two more today, the tenth and the eleventh. 
so based on the presence and absence of notochord what is notochord so what is notochord so notochord is a rod like structure what is notochord it is a rod like structure present on the dorsal side of the body dorsal see we in human beings we come under cordex so this part you call it as ventral and the back part you call it as dorsal so in invertebrates it is opposite if a cockroach is like this this part you call it as the dorsal and this you call it as the ventral okay so i hope you got this point rod like structure is present on the dorsal side of the body and if there is this rod like structure which is called as the notochord if this notochord is present you call it as <coughs> you group those organisms under chordata and if they do not possess this rod like structure or the notochord then they are grouped under non chordata they are grouped under non chordata so absence of a notochord they are referred as non chordates and presence of a notochord they are referred as chordates so all the animals coming from porifera to echinoderma they can be put under non chordata hemichordata and chordata can be studied under chordata so based on the presence and absence of notochord organisms can be classified into non chordates and chordates <coughs> so non chordates are also called as invertebrates they are also called as invertebrates in and some groups of chordates are also called as invertebrates that we will discuss uh, in the future classes in detail okay so chordates lower chordates <coughs> they contain this notochord whereas the higher chordates they contain they are the notochord there is replaced by Uh, a backbone or what do you call it as the vertebral column don't worry now once again we'll discuss it later when you discuss the characteristics of this phylum that is chordata anyhow you just understand right now not notochord is present you call it as chordates notochord is absent you call them as non chordates right next based on the segmentation of the body based on the segmentation of the body so in some organisms you can see the clear segmentation on the body the best example i can take is your uh, earthworm so this earthworm on its body it contains certain line series of repeated segmented structures like this so you can see the segments or compartment like structures in when you see the earthworm or if you see a cockroach cockroach you open the wings you uh, see the cockroach the body is divided like this into different compartments i'm writing a rough figure so you can call this as segments they are referred as segments so series of repeated divisions present on the entire body you call it as segmentation or it is also called as metameric segmentation metameric segmentation so series of divisions or segments present throughout the body you call it as metameric segmentation and this phenomenon is also called as metamerism metamerism it is called as metamerism so the best example of uh, organisms exhibited uh, exhibit metamerism can be seen in the group or under the phylum annelida it is uh, that is your earthworm and even in cockroach that is orthropods orthropoda these two phylum these two phyla sorry these two phyla they exhibit metamerism or metameric segmentation is seen it is also seen in chordates but in chordates you add it here chordata also you can see the segmentation 
here in annelida and arthropoda you can see both internal and external segmentation can be seen in annelida and arthropoda both internal and external uh, that means outside the body and inside the body both you can see the segmentation but in chordata it is only internal and a wrong feeling of segments can be seen in another group which is called as pseudo metamerism pseudo metamerism pseudo metamerism can be seen in case of uh, tape worm in case of tape worm very important from your neat point of view metamerism pseudo metamerism right so that is metamerism annelida arthropoda and chordata but annelida and arthropoda you can find metamerism both internally and externally to the body in chordata only internal segmentation is seen and uh, segmentation like appearance is seen in case of tape worm right and that concept is called as pseudo metamerism it is called as pseudo metamerism so notochord based on notochord the organisms are classified into chordates and non chordates based on segmentation organisms are classified into metamerism metameric segmentation and pseudo metameric segmentation yes <clears throat> next coming to the other point habitat what do you understand by this word habitat <clears throat> habitat is the living place of an organism habitat is a living place of an organism it may be aquatic it may be aquatic or it may be terrestrial it may be aquatic or it may be terrestrial aquatic aqua means water which live in water so organisms which live in water they are referred as aquatic in aquatic also you find two types one is the fresh water organisms which live in fresh water and the organisms which live in marine water so fresh water is the edible water which we drink right potable water it is also called as the one which we are able to drink because it contains very less salt content but as the marine water it, it has a rich soil content and uh, <clears throat> the sea water particularly the sea water and the uh, ocean water can be called as the marine water and in fresh water is the inland water the river water the lake water the water in the ponds all can be referred as the fresh water then here in aquatic also you have uh, the organisms are classified like zooplankton zooplankton nekton and benthic benthos let us write benthos right so zooplankton they are floating organisms that can be seen in the water which are called as zooplanktons they are tiny microscopic floating organisms in the water which are referred as zooplankton right they are microscopic the examples are the protozoans and some of the protists the protozoans example you can take protozoans because they are microscopic right and certain other protists they can they come under zooplankton nekton they are active swimmers nekton they are active swimmers like the fishes particularly the bony fishes they can they come under the shark the fishes the the, the bony fishes they come under the uh, nekton which are active swimmers and the benthos or the one which dwell in the bottom of the aquatic body and they uh, uh, examples are sponges and the echinoderms and the echinoderms so they live in the bottom of the sea or bottom of the water body you, you call them as benthic organisms or benthic animals 
nekton, the fishes, the active swimmers, and the zooplanktons, or the protozoans and the protists. So they all live in water. So in organisms living on land, you call them as terrestrial. You call them as terrestrial. Here also in terrestrial, you have something like the cursorial, the fusorial, the orboreal and the aerial. The cursorial, they are fast runners. They are fast runners like kangaroo, dog and all those can be given as the examples. Kangaroo, dogs, etc. Your cheetah, you can take that also, but cheetah is extinct. Anyhow, fusorial, the one which live in burrows. Burrow, they make holes in the earth and they live there. They are called as fusorial and they live in the burrows. They live in the holes which are made in the earth and the best examples are your rats or rabbits. Rabbit, rats, all these can be the example for fusorial. Even your earthworms, they are fusorial. So arboreal is they live on trees. They live on trees. Monkeys, bats, all these can be example. The tree dwellers are called as arboreal. Aerial, they are active flyers. They fly in the air, the birds or your winged insects. Winged insects, both can be example of aerial. So arboreal, you have monkeys and bats. Monkeys, bats, etc. And even some birds also you can refer. Okay, so cursorial, terrestrial, they can be classified like cursorial, fusorial, arboreal, and aerial. Some are active runners, some live in the burrows, some live in trees, and some they fly in the air, they are called as aerial. So cursorial, fusorial, arboreal, and aerial. So presence on the, uh, sorry, base, basis of, we are studying basis of classification. So we have studied notochord, we have studied based on segmentation, we have studied based on habitat. Organisms can be classified into aquatic, terrestrial and in aquatic also you can classify them as zooplanktons, nectons and benthos. So terrestrial, you have cursorial, fusorial, arboreal, aerial like this, they are land dwellers. Okay. Now coming to the next point, so we have completed notochord, we have completed sedimentation, we have completed habitat. Now coming to body temperature. So based on the body temperature, organisms have been classified into two types. Organisms have been classified into two types. Based on the body temperature. So one is called as Poikilothermic, poikilotherms, or they are also called as cold blooded. They are also called as cold blooded. Cold blooded animals or poikilotherms. The other is homeothermic. or they are also referred as warm blooded. They are also called as ectotherms and endotherms. They are also called as ectotherms and endotherms. Okay, poikilotherms, they are cold blooded organisms where their body temperature varies according to the environmental temperature. Body temperature varies according to the environmental temperature, you call them as poikilotherms. That is if the outside temperature, that is the room temperature is something like 20 degrees, uh, the organisms will keep its body temperature, internal body temperature will be maintained to 20 degree in that sense. So they are cold blooded, they maintain the same body temperature as that of the 
external or environmental body tem uh, environmental temperature so homeotherms they have a constant body temperature they have a constant body temperature hence they are called as homeotherms or warm blooded animals so cold blooded animals or poikilotherms all your invertebrates all invertebrates invertebrates is starting from porifera all those organism including some chordates including some chordates like fishes reptiles amphibians all are nothing but cold blooded animals so homeotherms only two groups you find one is the birds and the other is mammals only two group of animals they exhibit what is called as homeothermic type of body temperature so based on the body temperature organisms are classified into poikilotherms and homeotherms right so finally coming to the development of the body development in the sense developing from the embryo stages soon after or the pro during the process of re uh, reproduction the young one comes out of the parents body so that entire phase you call it as a development and in development we have two types of development one is called as indirect development indirect development and the other is direct development indirect development means the organism the adult organism emerges from non identical stage of a, a smaller stage so that is uh, the there is an larval stage there is a larval stage the young ones emerge out of the eggs they undergo metamorphosis they undergo a larval stage and finally this larva leads into adult where the adult and the larva are dissimilar dissimilar that means if you see the larva you can't tell this is the larva of this organism so they are not identical they look very different so after the egg hatches into a young one the young one undergoes lot of changes that is metamorphosis and finally it undergoes larval stage the pupal stage and finally becomes an adult and the larva is dissimilar to that of the adult they are not identical they are entirely different they look very different direct development the egg directly develops into a, a gives out an adult eggs the hatch out into an adult organism you call it as uh, which look like the adult egg hatches and the young one comes out and the young one is similar to that of the adult the young one that hatches out of the egg is similar to that of the adult hence the development is called as direct because it just it is similar to that of the adult organism or the parent organism here before the adult emerges it undergoes huge uh, many changes it undergoes metamorphosis it undergoes different stages it takes different stages larva and pupa it becomes and finally becomes an adult the best example you have you might have studied about butterfly butterfly um, in the egg stage after that they become green colored structures which are called as caterpillars and after that a pupal stage emerges out and finally an adult comes so adult is neither like the pupa nor like the caterpillar it is entirely different right so like that that is called as indirect development and in direct development the egg whatever comes out of the egg that is almost similar to that of the adult organism so that is why it is called as a direct development so based on the notochord the organisms are classified into non chordates and chordates based on the segmentation you can classify organisms into pseudo metameric and metameric 
So based on the habitat you can classify organism as aquatic terrestrial. In aquatic also you can uh, group them into zooplanktons, nectons, benthos etc. Benthic organisms etc. And uh, in aquatic also you, uh, sorry in terrestrial also you can bifurcate them like arboreal, aerial then um, what uh, uh, fusorial and cursorial right. And based on the body temperature they are classified into poikilotherms and homeotherms. And based on the development they are classified into indirect development and direct development. So these are some of the, in indirect development you can uh, take the examples or turn invertebrates or examples, invertebrates, amphibians, reptiles, all these can be examples, amphibians. Direct development, some of the chordates including mammals. Direct uh, de uh, development can be seen even in a uh, orthropod like lepisma shows direct development. So in chordates mammals exhibit uh, what is called as the direct development. So these are the various uh, salient features based on which the animal kingdom has been classified into 12 phyla starting from protozoa, porifera, the other day I had written. Now all the 12, we will list it out once again with the help of a schematic representation. Okay, we will write a schematic representation to sum up what all I have already told, right. Writing the schematic representation, the animal kingdom has been classified into two groups based on their cellular organization. So, protozoa and metazoa. So, protozoans they are of protoplasmic level, they are of protoplasmic level or you can also call it as acellular, absence of cells, they are unicellular. Here in metazoa they are all multicellular, they are multicellular, right. The metazoans are further classified into They are further classified into parazoa and eumetazoa. They are classified into parazoa and eumetazoa. So parazoans, they are animals with cellular grade of uh, organization. They are multicellular group of cells perform a particular function and they are they they have many cells that is they are multicellular group of cells perform a particular function but the cells are not derived into tissues so they are with cellular grade of organization grade of organization is seen and one important phylum that is studied under parazoa is phylum porifera or it is also called as sponges it is also called as sponges right it is also called as sponges eumetazoa in eumetazoa organisms are classified once again into two types here you find organisms with tissue grade of organization with organ grade of organization and organ system type of uh, organization so tissue organ and organ system type of organization can be seen 
and that group of organisms they are referred as eumetazoans and these eumetazoans based on their symmetry they have been classified into two types one is radiata and the other is bilateria and the other is bilateria right so based on symmetry it is so we have studied the symmetry asymmetry radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry i have explained it in detail so you know already know the examples here in radiata you uh, study two important uh, group of organisms one is phylum celenterata and the other is tinophora so both these phylum phyla are studied under the group radiata because they exhibit radial symmetry that is when the organism is cut into cut in any plane through the central axis passing through the center it gives two identical halves you call it as you call such organisms as, uh, as exhibiting radial symmetry and the organisms are called radiates so examples belong to the phylum celenterata and tinophora so we will study in detail these groups once again now coming to bilateria organisms which exhibit bilateral symmetry they come under bilateria so bilateria once again they are divided into bilateral symmetry so they are once again classified into a celomata pseudo celomata pseudo celomata and celomata yeah i have already explained you all these terminologies they are not new now for you you already know what it is a celomata so based on the presence and absence of the body cavity the classification is based on the body cavity so those organisms which do not have a body cavity they are called as a celomates and the organisms which do not possess they possess a body cavity but it is for false that is there is no mesodermal lining the coelom is present in the form of pouches you call it as pseudo coelomates and coelomata they have a true body cavity so one particular phylum is studied under a coelomata that is phylum platyhelminthes platyhelminthes so this is a group which contains all flat worms flat worms they are called as chapatte hulagalu it is called in kannada and in pseudo coelomate you will be studying another group of animals called as ascelminthes or it is also called as nematelminthes it is also called as nematelminthes or they are also called as round worms they are also called as round worms dundane hulagalu it is called in kannada and in finally it is coelomata where organisms possess a body cavity under this we will be studying i'll write it here so under coelomata you will be studying different groups like annelida orthropoda mollusca echinodermata hemichordata and finally chordata i hope none of the word is new here in the table for you because i have already described all these terminologies so in the first class itself i have given you three tips one you are exposed to huge number of new terminologies so please keep a notebook note everything in that book so all these what i write on the board i want you people to write in the note down, uh, notebook 
and secondly note all the new words write the definition of them and also identify them in your textbook mark it with the help of a highlight uh, highlighter and uh, just go through it if you have any doubts confusions or you know, need clarification or some more explanation please call to my number which was given in the first video 9901635715 is my mobile number please comment or if you want see i am i can speak good kannada also so if somebody is having language problem you can tell me or you can comment uh, put it in the comment box if you want an explanation in uh, kannada also i shall be including some kannada words in my explanation it's fine for me uh, let us change our style of explanation that is only for your favor so my intention is you should understand this con these concepts there should be very clarity you should be convinced with the classes that are going on that is my intention so if you have any doubts please call back or comment with me once again the schematic representation is very is in a very simplified form showing the classification of kingdom anima animalia so animal kingdom is based on what all we have studied so many points in detail so all these you can see here so based on the cellular organization they have been classified into protozoa and metazoa here we will study in protozoa you study the phylum protozoa itself but in our syllabus you have studied it under kingdom protista okay so we are we are directly going in our next class to the explanation of porifera we will study the phylum porifera so animal animal kingdom has been broadly classified into protozoa and metazoa so protozoans they are unicellular organisms whereas metazoans they are multicellular organisms the metazoans are further classified into based on their body organization they are classified into parazoa and eumetazoa so all parazoans they contain group of cells and the group of cells itself will perform different functions but those cells are not derived into tissues so here we can see in eumetazoans organisms with tissue grade of organization uh, organisms with organ grade of organization and organ system uh, grade of organization so eumetazoans are further classified into two types based on the symmetry so radial organisms with radial symmetry come under the group radiata and organisms with bilateral symmetry will come under the group called as bilateria so under radiata we are going to study two important phylums that is coelenterata and tenophora under bilateral symmetry once again the bi uh, bilateria group is divided into three groups based on the presence and absence of their body cavity so body cavity it is a cavity present in between the alimentary canal and the body wall which is called as coelom if the coelom is present the organism is called as coelomata if the coelom is present but it is not clear that it is not lined by mesoderm then you call it as pseudocoelom if the cavity is totally absent you call it as acoelomata and the group of organisms studied under acoelomata is platyhelminthes and a pseudocoelomata is ascelminthes or nematelminthes which you call it as round worms coelomata we study different group of different phyla under uh, coelo, uh, coelomata that is annelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata and chordata all the other groups are studied under coelomata so this is about the classification of animal kingdom so we have put it in the form of a schematic representation this will be easy for you to remember and also learn these terminologies also with examples all right so with this information with this we are going to end up this video today any doubts please call or comment in the comment box thank you